What is up, everybody? Tim Anderson here, a.k.a. Renfail. Welcome back to the final episode in our Incarnate tutorial series. And today we're going to be adding the finishing touches to this map, which has been the open world map that we've been building alongside everyone to show you how to build a world map. Now, it's a little bit different when you break it down and go into your regional maps and then your city maps and then your battleground maps beyond that. But we're starting with the biggest and then going down from here so that you can learn how to make all the different types of maps in Incarnate. If you are a returning visitor, welcome back. Appreciate the support as we have made this series over the past few weeks. If you're new here, hopefully you'll like this video enough to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon and support in some way, shape or form with either a membership here on YouTube, a membership over there on our Patreon page where you can get copies of our maps for our modules and campaigns and, and tabletop world and the source book and etc. Um, it's also a video game and a book series, uh, but you can also do super chats, stickers and super thanks on videos here on YouTube. All those ways are great ways to support. Today's video is going to be all about, um, terrain painting, which somebody might, some people might call texture painting, but you're really not painting textures so much as you are adding the illusion of textures. But essentially we're just doing um, terrain painting here, which is going to be blending the map together so that it has more color variation. So if you remember the very first episode we did, we did a little bit of painting, a little bit. So you'll notice at the top, it's a little you know, kind of like a bluish white hue across the top portions of the land mass. And then over on the far left, we've got sort of a, a brown or a yellowish tint, which is like the sand texture because that's a desert region. And then we've got this area, if you remember here, we were doing um, the idea of a kind of uh, wastelands here, all these ruined trees and everything here, and this ancient ruined city um, in between these two packs of hills. So we need to further paint that out because we've only done some very, very light um, painting that we did earlier on in the map making process to just, just to represent what those regions were. But now we actually want to go in here and fine tune that um, and, and make this map pop I hate to use that word, but let's just use that word because it does fit. So, uh, yeah, today's all about terrain painting. Let me go ahead and kill my face off the video. Move that over there so that we don't get sidetracked. You don't need to see my face because you want to see the tools. So first off, we're going to go over here to the brush tool. And we're going to start at the top and we're just going to work our way down. So I need to pick something that is snowy. Um, we've got land white, ice and snow. I'm just going to go with straight up snow. Now, I never, ever like to start with 100% opacity. I, I, you know, depends on what I'm doing. So I'm going to drop this down to around half, and I'm just going to do one quick stroke. That's not too bad. I, 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 I can dig that. Okay, so we're going to do that. Okay. And we're just giving these a couple of passes just to sort of represent that this is snowy. And we can continue to take this up all we want. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a pass right across the top of this range. If you saw the way that I did that. Something like that. Okay, so that gives us the understanding that these northern regions are cold. And I wanna go ahead and do a really, get it completely defined across these upper layers these islands and these over here are completely frozen just like so okay um, make sure that we got that done well enough all right now I want to come in and say I, I need to further define and by the way we should save our changes after we've defined one area let's do that before we go any further because I don't want to make any mistakes and have to backtrack Matter of fact, I probably could have, uh, this is a tip which I forgot to do before I get started here, but when you're doing texture painting, you can likely just come in and work on it in the 2K map, which will give you faster loading times and everything else. Because we're not worried about asset placement in this particular one. Matter of fact, I'll just do that so you guys can see what I'm talking about if you haven't seen me change resolutions before. 
It'll save. It'll it'll help us with save times and everything because it's not working at such a high resolution. Because you see, this this takes quite a bit. All right, let's go back to the um, turn to maps. We're going to choose to edit this at resolution 2K. Hell, I mean, we could even go as low as 1K. Let's just do one. I don't think we've ever opened a map at 1K ever. But because we're only painting textures, it won't really matter that much. So you see how everything looks really low resolution? I'm okay with that because we're not worried about the asset placement right here. We just want to paint. So I want to come back in here to the brush tool um, and open catalog. And we're looking for some sort of like deserty, you know. I can also look, by the way, this is when you can get into the fantasy regional stuff. There's um, other textures in here that you can actually use. Um, which you don't have to, but there's tiling if you want to use tiling. Um, I kind of like that desert better. But these all have textures, so I'm going to ignore those for now because we don't want to deal with the texture stuff. So, barren lands are not barren. These deserts are a little too brownish for me, but I mean, that one's not too bad. Let's go with Desert 1. Okay. Now, again, I don't like to use 100% opacity, so we're going to drop this down. And we're just going to, we're going to paint along the coast here. Okay, now I need to take a different color because we painted the coast. So let's do... I want something. Yeah, let's take the rock garden. I know it's not desert, but the reason I want to do this is because I want to drop the opacity down to like 30 and paint along here. And if you see what I'm doing, I'm just adding a little bit of brown to that, to the hills, right? Not a ton. And I might actually think that that's too much. So we'll go back here. We'll keep that at 30% and we'll just do a little blend up the middle just like so so that gives us a desert over on the left okay now we know that the um, these forested regions um, probably have some type of you know darker undergrowth beneath in this so this will add a little bit of shading where we can come in and say we want to take say Something a little darker, maybe. Grass mixed. Grass 2. I don't like either one of those. Land 2. Hmm. So we're going to bring our brush size way down here for this one. And we're just kind of going to paint in here like so now this doesn't have to be perfect because again we're just doing passes here to sort of roughly give the impression that you know the the ground is a little more dark inside those and maybe even slightly around okay And bring our brush back up and we can just do a whole swath in here now again it doesn't have to be perfect because you can always do more painting and we're just that's all we're doing right now is just adding a little bit of and i use strokes as best i can um because we just want to add A little bit of OK, 
Okay. And this could rep represent farmlands too, you know. It's just... Yeah. Now we know that along the river is probably going to be a little more lush than it might be otherwise. So let's go in here with, say, grass too. Let's see what this looks like. And I actually want to keep this brush kind of wide because we're going to go along the whole edge of the the river. That might have been the same texture we used when we started. So let's try something slightly different. Um, I don't know what I want to use here. Maybe try this one just to show some contrast. And that's you notice that we're just doing the riverways because we want to the big riverways because we want to give that illusion that the um, the space along these rivers is more fertile. So we're just adjusting the size of this brush depending on what we're painting, and this is just a very subtle. like so. You can spread it out if you'd like to. We're going to come down in here, do all of these. And this is probably one of my favorite components because the terrain painting is so subtle that it's really hard to see it un unless you're watching it in a sort of time lapse like this where we're coming in and doing multiple um, passes on things. Um, but it gives you a chance to see those changes happen in real time. We're going to go ahead and save this, and then we're going to back out again and work in the 4K so that you guys can continue to see it unfolding in the highest resolution possible. So let's go ahead and get that saved. We're going to back out now. And we're going to work. I don't know why it's. There we go. Open a resolution. Ultra. Time to open the map. The maximum resolution. All right. All right. The last thing we want to do for the moment is come in and I, I don't like the green of the land yet. We're going to darken this up a little bit. But before I do, I want to work on the, the barren section here. So we're going to come in here to barren stuff. I think we want to stick with the gray, dark gray. I want to bring that down again. Bring the opacity down to like 30%. And we're just going to paint like so. And we want to just eliminate. I'm going to bring the opacity up to 50. There we go. That's a little bit better. So we want these to be... You know, this is a nasty. Now we can bring it back down a little bit and paint in the middle. And you'll notice that we're going to make this entire region. It's a little less the further we get towards the coast. And definitely thick when we get up into the center of it. Now if I want to, I can bring the opacity all the way up and I'll just paint this section here. Like all along the forest, that's completely contaminated. And so that's the darkest band right in there. 
because this place is completely devoid of life. So like so. So that gives us the desolate area down to the south. Now if I want to do some more blending, I can even come in here and say, let's add a little bit of, um, say, this color. That's water gray, but that's okay. It doesn't matter what it says. What matters is, you know, what it actually looks like. And we can come in here and we can paint. Nope, that's too blue. I don't like that at all. So we don't need to do any more. <laughs> all right, uh, let's make the sage. Let's make those saves. <laughs> we have one more thing we're going to do, and that's going to be a general painting um, over the landscape. And remember that a lot of these mountains kind of have some um, transparency to them. So we can actually get in there and kind of further define the color of the mountains a little bit. Not a lot. Just a little bit because it's only partially transparent because they do have like these are the gray mountains and these are the green mountains. So if we if we were to take one of these assets, it would it would have a little bit of color to it, but also some transparency. But what I want to do is I want to come here through through the main land and I want to say I'm a pretty big fan of this texture, the grass, too. So we're going to come through here with this. We're going to have it at like a 30 percent, but we want to use a really big brush, right? And we just want to do that pass like we're doing right there. And I want to come through the mountains. Do it down here, up through here, yeah, through there and on those northern parts of the mountains. Now that is probably as far as I want to take this. Now, there are obviously way more passes that I could make if I wanted to. Like we could come in here and further define, you know, have this be brown for farmlands and so on and so forth. But I like to leave my maps somewhat vague on the world map scale because if you really want to go down into farmlands and everything like that you can go in and define those with the um, regional maps and say okay this is a valley this is this is rich farmland and so on and so forth here we've got a little uh, enough of vagueness that we can come in and say well um, we've got generally a tropical, you know, excuse me, a temperate landscape here in the middle, um, generally speaking. Um, so we can, you know, play with that and, and, and go from there. I'm just going to do one more pass here because I kind of like the way that looked. Yeah. Do I do any more? <laughs> you can always do more. That's the problem. You can always come in and, and touch up and, and, and continue to paint and continue to polish. But at some point, you have to say enough's enough. So we're going to save. Get my face back on the video here. Um, we're done. This is officially the end of this tutorial series in Incarnate. So now that the map is done, I'm actually going to get this map uploaded into the Explore part of Incarnate, which means it will be publicly available. Um, That'll probably happen after I get the video uploaded or maybe before, I don't know. Somewhere along the line, I'll have that link down available in the description text below for those of you who want to go pick up the map and, and play around with it. You'll be able to clone it, import it into your own map um, library, and then tweak it from there. So uh, those of you who've been following along, again, thanks so much for your support. I appreciate you tuning into these. If you haven't already done so, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. And please consider supporting. It keeps me doing this full time. You can join as a member here on YouTube. You can join as a member over on our Patreon page where you can also get 
you know, the map packs that we've made for our world, the tabletop module, the demo for the point and click adventure game and the book series. You can get all that stuff over there uh, here on YouTube, three different tiers of memberships. You can also do super chats and premieres on li- on uh, super chats, and stickers, sorry, on premieres and live streams and super thanks on uploaded videos. We also have a discord. The links are all down there down below. Stick around because I will be doing a lot more with Incarnate because I'm in the middle of getting the next module ready for our um, tabletop world. So that'll be out sometime later in 2023. No timeline yet. Chris is doing some artwork for that. And I now have to make the next set of maps, which is a minimum of 20 maps for the next campaign. We've already done the Forkland map and I've got the Laughing Badger Tavern. We can actually go back and we've looked at that. Well, I won't do it here. Um, we've done some of the maps because we got those ready before we were live streaming that campaign. But now that we're done with that portion of the campaign, I actually have to take those maps and then break them down even further and create the additional battleground and regional maps that we need to fully flesh out that module and then those become available for our patrons over on the patreon page and they also go into the pdf that um, people purchase so that you can use those maps in our campaign setting and we have those available in an agnostic format with all the POI stripped out for our patron subscribers so that they can use those maps in any of their BTT programs. So if that all sounds like fun to you, stick around because i got a lot more incarnate stuff coming down the pipeline throughout 2023 because I have a ton of maps I have to make. Um, so we're going to be trying to do a map a week. That sounds good. Map a week. Hold me to it, everybody. Till next time, stay safe. Happy gaming.